Good evening and welcome back to the last day of the 10th annual Regulators and Policymakers Retreat being held by IPPI and Aviation Watch here at Goa. With me, I have the honor uh, to welcome Mr. Pradeep Bejan. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, given your near legendary experience at uh, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, as also your experiences in the power sector. Uh, so, what are the differences and what are the similarities and what can the uh, telecom experience teach the power sector? If you must remember, <coughs> I became a telecom regulator uh, and I came from the power sector. So, I more or less knew what were the problems uh, which have been uh, stopping the growth of the power sector. I looked at many of these steps that we had not taken in the power sector. So therefore, when I went to another network industry, that is telecom network industry, I had a huge background of network regulation, which we tried to do in the power sector, but were not successful. So I did not repeat any of the mistakes that we made in the power sector. It was a huge advantage. Basically, what network regulation means is, that you are coming from a single operator uh, industry to a multi-operator industry. The network is the same and that is why it was a monopoly. The network is the same. Now, you have to enable new persons to join this network. Now, if these new persons join the network at a disadvantage, then they will not be able to compete against the incumbent or the old established operator. So, the first thing is, that you have good interconnection systems, transparent interconnection systems, the government or the uh, incumbent operator should not be able to stop this uh, system and the tariffs should be competitive with the incumbent, interconnection tariffs. So that is what I started with, that the interconnection must be automatic, interconnection must be transparent and the interconnection tariffs must be very low. Second problem that we had faced in the power industry was that there were very high cross subsidies. And I had seen that the power sector had destroyed itself by high cross subsidies. So I took a gamble and I said that from 30% cross subsidy in the telecom sector, the cross subsidy will be zero in three years. Later on, there was a lot of pressure, so I made it five years. But everyone experienced the benefit of abolition of cross subsidy. With the result, the tariffs came down from 32 rupees to 1 rupee. International tariffs came down from 40 rupees to 2 rupees. National long distance tariffs also uh, came down. This enabled a large number of people who were not able to afford telecom services to join the network. And you had a huge expansion in the number. The huge expansion gave huge revenues to the operators and also to the government despite very, very low tariffs. And that was the main strength of reforms in the telecom sector. Now, if you go to the power sector, what is the corresponding uh, thing in the power sector? Instead of interconnection, it is open access. It means the same. Open access means that if I am a generator, I should be able to join the distribution and the transmission line Absolutely. in a transparent and low tariff manner. Unfortunately, that has not happened in the power sector even today. Even though I must say that the law makes it very clear that anyone can start a generating a station and anyone, uh, and, anyone and everyone will have open access. But the regulator, the state governments and even the central government have put roadblocks. Now, why have roadblocks been put? Roadblocks have been put so that we continue the old practices of the telecom sector or the power sector that everyone comes to the government functionaries for approvals. It's a very comfortable thing for a government functionary that uh, you come to me and I take all kinds of free lunches from you. But that is not the way liberalized economy works. That is not the way liberalized networks work. And therefore, we had made it automatic. We had a huge advantage. We had a brilliant first regulator. 
Justice Sodhi. And he was very clear that he would not deviate from principles. So his automatic interconnection, low charge interconnection was opposed by everyone in the government. And this was one of the reasons why he lost his job. Why he lost his job then declared the future of the telecom industry. When I came, the, the, the interconnection was blocked again, this time by judicial action. First time it was blocked by the government and judicial action, but the government had gone in for an ordinance. When I came in, it was again blocked by judicial action. But then I appealed all over the place and I won those cases. And therefore, it is open access in the telecom sector and it is no open access in the power sector. It's a very dishonest uh, open access, though the law says so. But it has not <coughs> been implemented. To give you an example, if you uh, see, the open access says, I'll either give it to you for less than three months or I'll give it to you for more than 25 years. Now, if I'm a generator, I have uh, my interest in having open access for three months, six months, one year, five years, ten years. Why should the state regulate? The only argument can be that we don't have enough capacities. Now, all over the world, if you don't have open capacity, say after six years, then there's a very clear rule how capacities will be added right. and who will pay right. for those capacities to be created. But the open access is uniform all over the world. Why this is not being done in the power sector, you ask the power regulators. Though in the Act, overriding powers have been given to the central regulator, but he's not exercising it. Fortunately, since the new regulator had, has come, things have started moving. But if he wants to implement open access, he will have to put his neck on the chopping block. It may be chopped. Because the operators are very powerful. The incumbents are very powerful. In the long run, you get enormous amount of public support. I used to get enormous amount of public support, even though at times the government wanted uh, my head to be chopped and, and, and the operators. So those are the issues between the telecom and the power sector and if there is efficient interconnection corresponding, efficient open access in the power sector, you will achieve all the targets for the last so many years. Power sector has been slipping by 50% of the targets. We were also slipping till 2002 against the government uh, laid down targets, but, for the, but at present we are doing 300% of the targets. Now, something must have happened in the last six, seven years that from trailing behind targets, the Indian telecom sector is doing 300% of the targets. This is not India's uh, normal practice. In India, we always step behind targets, but we were doing 300% targets. So there must have been something, and these were the measures, zero subsidy, efficient interconnection, which led to this revolution and our growth rate is more than China, and I'm very proud of it. Last point uh, before I close. In the telecom network itself, we are doing miserably on broadband. Broadband will connect all the country. Broadband will give knowledge to all the country. Broadband will give information to all the country. Broadband is the vehicle for future uh, growth in any country. But we are doing terribly in the broadband area because we have not replicated the voice uh, regulation in broadband regulation. Second, all the world over, the networks are now becoming futuristic, converged networks, next generation networks. In India, the regulator and the government is blocking uh, new technology regulations. And that is why the broadband is almost being blocked by the government. If this continues, it will be a tragedy because you have got a network which can connect not only the entire country, all the people. Forty percent of the people are already connected by voice telephone. Mm -hmm. And if they are not connected by broadband connection, it will be a big tragedy.